Right guys, how's it going? Welcome back. Today I'm back in my old 2002 Lexus LS430. If you haven't checked out the part one video, then go and check that out now because it'll give you some more background. I bought this car for just £2,500, but it did have quite a few issues. I've since spent more than that figure correcting those issues, and I'm about 95% of the way there. They're superb cars, these old LSs. They're so well built and comfortable and quiet and smooth. Having now carried out most of the work to it, I thought I'd do a quick update video. So let's get cracking. Firstly, I just need to say a big thank you to today's video sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Surfshark. If you haven't heard of Surfshark, they are a VPN service provider. They basically protect all your data and your details while you're online, whether that's shopping online or streaming television shows or online banking. It encrypts all your private details, both to and from your devices. It keeps your IP address completely hidden so cyber thieves can't view it. Surfshark's also handy if you watch lots of streaming sites, such as Netflix or Hulu. If you're in a foreign country and your favourite TV show isn't available in your region, you can use Surfshark to change your country settings or your country location so that those streaming sites think you're in a different country. That way you can watch all the shows and movies that you like. It's handy if you're here in the UK but you want to watch some of your favourite American TV shows. In addition to that, it blocks malware, phishing, ads, and other kinds of nastiness, which in turn can improve your bandwidth and speed up your device. You can download the app very easily from the App Store and use it on multiple devices. It's very cheap and very user-friendly. We're all online a huge amount of time now, and we really don't know how much information we're putting out there, so it's better to protect it, especially if you frequently jump onto public Wi-Fi hotspots, such as at airports, train stations, that sort of thing. The last thing I want to do is get my credit card hacked or my bank details stolen. And since I've been using Surfshark, such would, and there's plenty to choose from this car, it's kept me safe. If you use the link below, or go to surfshark.deals forward slash hypecortos, and use the promo code hypecortos, they'll give you three months totally free, and 83% off. So it's a no-brainer. The cost works out to something like £1.35 a month. So anyway, back to the old LS430. Now, this needed quite a bit of work, and there was quite a big difference between what my mechanic quoted, or the parts from Lexus, and what I actually paid. There were some quite good savings to be made. In fact, I'm probably best pulling over, aren't I, so I can go through them all with you. There we go, much better. I'll just recline my back seat slightly. Pop up the rear window blind. Right, so, the first issue, the bonnet wouldn't stay up, so the struts were worn out. Now, my mechanic quoted £45 each to replace them, but in the end, because I thought that was quite expensive, I went onto eBay and bought a pair for £15, and they just clip on, it couldn't be easier. The next issue, the radiator was leaking like a broken fridge freezer, so again, my mechanic quoted something like £360 from Lexus for a new one. Again, I thought that was quite expensive, so I went online and found a brand new copied part for £100 delivered. Be careful if you need to order one of these radiators because it's no ordinary rad. It's got a cooler thing on the top for the transmission, so it is a little bit more complicated than a standard radiator. Don't think because it's a copied part it's poor quality because it really wasn't. They claim that it's 30% more effective at cooling than an OEM part, and so far so good. Another issue was a dodgy wheel bearing. When you would drive it you got a, a hum coming from the near side front, but because this is a, a complicated luxury car, Lexus won't just sell you the wheel bearing, it comes as a complete hub, and they were quite expensive. My mechanic said that Lexus wanted £320 for a new one. So again, a quick look online, and I got one for £55 delivered. Next problem, there was a lot of brake judder. So you'd stand on the, on the brake pedal, and you'd get a lot of judder coming through the pedal and through the steering wheel. So that needed a new set of front brake discs and pads. The cost of replacing those discs and pads were £128. One of the front air suspension struts was leaking. Now Lexus wanted nearly £900 for a new one, which I thought was extortionate. So after falling off my chair, I went on the internet and found a brand new copied part for £310. So a third of the price. And again, so far it's done the job perfectly fine. Because the LS is so refined and over-engineered, it has double glazing, just like you'd expect to see at home. So there are actually two panes of glass there. But, and this can happen at home too, with time, they can start to leak, and then moisture and stuff gets inside and it starts to frost up, and that had happened on the near side front window. Now, I had some difficulty locating a new front window glass. So in the end, I went onto eBay and found somebody who was breaking an old LS, 
and got them to send me a near side front window glass for £80 plus £20 post and packaging. So, result. And it was quite an easy job to fit. The next fault was with the sound system. Now, this has the Mark Levinson sound system, which is excellent, but if you turn up the bass and the treble, you got this kind of buzzy, tinny noise, which I thought initially was a blown speaker. But thanks to your guys' help in the comments, you've all suggested it could be the amp here. So, again, I went onto the internet and found somebody who was selling refurbished amps for £175. So I've ordered one of those. I haven't fitted it yet because I think it's a bit of a mission to do, but that's a job for next week. The next issue were the wheels. Now, the wheels, if you remember from part one, were starting to flake and corrode. It's quite a common issue with Japanese cars. The lacquer starts to peel, then they go powdery, the element starts to get in there, and before you know it, they look a mess. So I went to Prestige Wheels, who are now in Bredbury, they were in Stockport, they dipped them, uh, stripped them, and then powder coated them, and they look fantastic. They are a little bit on the pricey side, but you get what you pay for, and the quality is always excellent. So that cost me £288, including VAT. When I picked it up from Prestige Wheels, the wheel centres looked a little bit, well, they're 20 years old, they looked a bit scruffy looking. So I had a look on the internet, couldn't find them because they're quite, quite rare to get hold of. So in the end, I spoke to Lexus Stockport. I spoke to the guy in parts at Lexus, not expecting them to be stocked, and had a bit of a a Julia Roberts pretty woman moment because he said, well, yeah, I can get them, but they're quite expensive, so I don't know if I'd bother. Big mistake. So I ordered all four. They cost me £42 plus VAT each, which is a bit of a waste of money, to be honest, but they look brand new. Well, they are brand new. They look amazing. So with the VAT, they cost me about £50 each, which was just purely out of social embarrassment. Anyway, probably a waste of money, but they look good. Uh, what else? Oh, I bought a new genuine set of carpet mats. Again, I couldn't believe Lexus stocked these, but for 90 odd pounds, I got a brand new set of tailored mats, which I need to put in, but I'm keeping them in the boot right now because they're brand new. What else? Mechanically, I had a full service done. So new oil, oil filter, pollen filter, air filter. I changed the cam belt because although it had been done, it was about nine years ago, so I knew it was due again. So I had a new cam belt and water pump. Um, what else? Um, the labour to fit the bonnet struts, the labour to fit the shock absorber, the labour to fit the wheel bearing. Two new tyres, fitted and balanced. I had the underside completely wax oil just because I thought it would prevent it rusting any further. And an MOT, which is now passed with no advisory items. So the total was, you sitting down, £1,128.81. Then I had the gearbox serviced, because I don't think it had ever been done, and it's done 137,000 miles and it's 20 years old. So I had the gearbox fluid and filter replaced, that cost me £168, which is money well spent. It wasn't an issue before because it was still silky smooth, but now I've just got the confidence knowing that it's been done. That's pretty much it. All I need to do now is, there's a small crack, like a hairline crack really, in one of the wing mirror covers on the driver's side, so I need to get that repainted. Then I'm going to send the whole car in for a buff and a detail and a proper valet because I'm sure these mats and seat belts and leather seats will come up like new. They've just got 20 years of cigarette smoke on them, which I'm pretty sure will come out. I might try and let off one of those air freshener bombs in here just to get rid of the, uh, the cigarette smoke because it smells like an 80s pub vault. But anyway, yeah, that's more or less the Lexus LS done. Quick recap then, I'll add this all up for you. I've spent £2,742.81, pence, which is more than I paid for the car. Add that to the two and a half grand I paid for the car, that brings my grand total to £5,242.81. pence. And I expect I'll spend another maybe three or four hundred pounds on it, getting it detailed, valeted, and then I'm done. Now, I know that's... <laughs> so it is a lot of money, but for about five and a half grand, this car's unbelievable, and I truly believe, well, you never know with used cars, do you, because you just never know when it's going to throw on an engine light or, a, you know, a crankshaft sensor or something like that, but I truly believe with this car, I should get five years out of it easily without spending any more money on it, apart from, you know, oil changes and things like that. One thing I haven't included in my grand total are the fuel costs, and at 17 miles per gallon, they can soon add up, but I think I'll just gloss over that. So, yeah, that's about it. Thanks once again for watching. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't done already. You can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I'll leave the link below. 
make sure you check out Surfshark. And yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers, guys.